Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. I left my heart. Well, that's how I was going to do the show today, but I can't do it about Columbus Day and a wonderful time was had by all. I will work that in, but we are front and central talking about the massive 45,000 acre fire that is burning somewhat out of control in Napa and Sonoma County. Uh, counties, people are leaving the areas that we're talking about the wine country to the rest of America. This is a national story. It started, we don't know where, a Hilton burnt to the ground, a Kmart store burnt to the ground, a McDonald's, an Arby's, an Applebee's, a pizza shop. 175,000 people in Santa Rosa have been evacuated. Schools and businesses are shuttered. Two hospitals in Santa Rosa, those run by Kaiser Permanente and Sutter Health, evacuated. Power outages are widespread. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a massive fire. No one knows how it started. We can only guess. We can only guess, and believe me, theories are starting to circulate, and I will not repeat them, but I'm going to ask you this. If you are a first-hand fire witness, if you are a first-hand fire witness in Napa or Sonoma counties, and you are part of the evacuees, I invite you to call 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282, and tell the Bay Area and the world what you are experiencing, because this is not going to end tomorrow. The fire has canceled many businesses, concerts, venues. People do not know what to do. Ash was falling from the sky around the Bay Area all the way into San Francisco. In fact, I got to tell you something. We went from heaven to hell overnight. Yesterday, Columbus Day, Blue Angels Day, was one of the most beautiful days of my life. The skies were perfect. The Blue Angels were stirring. The party at Pinocchio's restaurant was the most phenomenal party I've ever been to in my life. I was dancing. I was singing. In fact, I even tweeted a picture of myself with a bunch of young Italian kids, and I was telling them some stories. It was It's a beautiful picture. you got to see it on michaelsavage.com. I was ready to talk about the beauty of Columbus Day, the parade, the multi-ethnic Uh, value of this parade. It's not just Italians. It's fabulous to see. It's an America you never see. And I did want to talk about it. I also wanted to talk about Pinocchio Restaurant. What an incredible time we had. But I can't do that right now. I'm asking you if you're a fire witness. I want you to report to the Savage Nation and tell us what you are seeing. I don't know who started these fires. There are many other stories we're going to talk about. The 84-year-old Diane Feinstein, by the way, or is it Harvey Weinstein? I don't know. I'm confused. Is it Harvey Feinstein and Diane Weinstein? They're in the news right now. I don't know who's who at this point, but I know that one of the Feinsteins or Weinsteins is going to run again, but I don't think it's Harvey. I think it's Diane. Can you imagine that? And take a guess why this power-mad woman wants to run for office again. Why? It's because of global warming. I mean climate change. I mean whatever it's called now. And guns. That's what's making this power-mad woman want to run again. What a country we're living in. Now, with regard to Columbus Day, don't think the Italians are taking it on their backs. They're fighting back. Are you ready how they're fighting back? They're not going to roll over to the Indigenous Peoples Day crowd. A movement to abolish Columbus Day and replace it with so-called Indigenous Peoples Day is certainly gaining momentum in leftist-run cities, but not everywhere. Because the man who opened the Americas to European, um, you should say conquest if you're one of the indigenous, But all you indigenous people, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Columbus. You'd be back in your homeland cutting people's hearts out or having your own heart cut out. So stop with the nonsense. If it wasn't for Columbus, you'd be living in a cave or swinging from a tree or have your heart cut out. I'm sick and tired of this garbage. I am sick of it and I'm not Italian. And eliminating their festival of ethnic pride is about as culturally insensitive as you can get. A man named Basil Russo, president of the Order of Italian Sons and Daughters of America, said... We had a very difficult time in this country for well over 100 years. Columbus Day is a day that we've chosen to celebrate who we are, and we're entitled to do that just as they're entitled to celebrate who they are. That is absolutely true, 100% right. And I'm sick of it. I'm totally sick of this because the Italians have had a very rough time in this country in the beginning. 
Nobody handed them anything. But they didn't go on welfare. And he didn't burn anyone's statues down. They broke their behinds in this country to build this country, unlike the ungrateful bums who are coming in and sucking our welfare dry. You can take that to the bank. KSO Earl, what are you calling me about? Uh, I'm calling you about the fire yesterday. I was at the Vallejo Napa uh, flea market around 2 p.m. and a massive fire at the end of Green Valley Road and uh, Highway 29, the industrial area, broke out, and I never saw it let up um, the whole day and night. Yeah, that's what I'm asking you, Earl. As in, uh, what, where, What's your native area? Where do you live up there? I live on um, American Canyon, Vallejo border. Right. Okay, up- now we have seen wildfires in California before, but have we seen as many started or, at, well, let's say not started, as many at the same time as this? No, no, this, this is no, no, it, no. And I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of people indigenous to that area talk about Indigenous Peoples Day. A lot of people indigenous to Napa and Sonoma are saying they don't think this was a spontaneous series of fires. Did you hear what I just said? Who do you think started the fires or have they just started on their own? What do you think? What's the word on the street, Earl? Uh, I believe that someone is driving around and, and actually starting these fires and just continuing on, because I'm hearing that they're up in Grass Valley also. Well, we can't confirm that, but we can't deny it, and you're not the only one saying it. I've heard it from other people. Well, where are you evacuating to, or where are you heading? Um, I'm actually not evacuating. It's just heavy, heavy plumes of smoke in the area where I live. And All right. I, it's just stay, stay cool, stay calm, run your HEPA filter if you have one. I woke up 3.25 a.m. thinking that my house was burning or some idiot was burning a log near my house. And then I looked out and the entire Bay Area was coated with a gray smog, a gray smoke. So I figured, okay, some fires up in the North Country. Ash was falling all over my deck. My white cushions were turning gray with ash. I was shocked as I woke up early in the morning to find out that it was more than just a small fire. The fact of the matter is the whole... The whole area is on fire up there, and it's not getting under control very, very fast. I mean, we're not knocking the people who are trying to put it out. But, you know, most of you who have gone to the wine country understand what I'm saying to you. This is a big deal. Many wineries are not going to be standing after this. The wineries are right in the bowl of the fire. In addition to that, there is an extreme health hazard as the smoke is spreading throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. Governor Jerry Moonbeam Brown took time out from uh, condemning Donald Trump to declare a state of emergency and actually try to do something in the state of California. Cell service was down in parts of the North Bay. Smart train service was canceled uh, because of the morning fires. And I guess here's some good news. The fires are threatening a cannabis harvest. That's the only good news to save some brains uh, for the future. This is the Savage Nation, 855-407-282. If you're a first-hand fire witness... You can call this show, which is local and national at the same time. We're also talking about Columbus Day. I'm going to mix the two together because I did have one of the best days of my life yesterday. And it was at my friend uh, Giovanni's restaurant, Pinocchio. Yes, I'm giving him a plug because I loved every second of it. I was there with my family, and it was amazing. I, you know, that place is on a street where the parade comes around the corner, and they all remarshal right there, right in that short little strip of that street. And you get to see all the faces of the people, the soldiers, the sailors, the Marines, the Air Corps. You get to see the Coast Guard. You get to see the floats, the Ferraris, the cars. You get to see the young kids, the oldsters. And you get to see something interesting. It's a multi-ethnic parade in San Francisco. And uh, it's a contiguous parade for 149 years. And I got to tell you something. It was beautiful to be there. I felt as though I was in a, a movie that I'd written in my own brain. Had a beautiful day, beautiful day. Watching the Blue Angels fly overhead was the uh, the cherry on the cake, hearing the, the thunder of those jets. And all I could think of is go get them, boys. That's all I could think of. And then you wake up to a thing like this. We go from heaven to hell. And one of my friends said to me last night, just last night after dinner, he said, you know, you don't know what tomorrow will bring. I said, no, no, I'm going to do a show tomorrow about how beautiful Columbus Day was, how great it was eating a Pinocchio, how the kids, were they came over. I didn't know there were this many kids who listened to this show. I guess that's what I was going to say. I mean, I know I have a big audience here. I know that this show is 
a powerful voice in the San Francisco area and around the country. I know that for a fact. But I didn't know how many children listened to this show, and there they were. The parents brought them over in crowds, and they were saying, can they say hello to you, Mr. Savage? Now, I'm a former teacher. This was so important for me to understand that my audience goes beyond, let's say, adults. Let's put it to you that way. And I see the children. They, they want to say hello to me. Well, we have the wonderful picture of them. I want to thank the parents for bringing them over. And we also want to talk about the horror of today and how it's affecting people. And so if you, if you are a firefighter who is up there facing this nightmare, if you are a firsthand fire witness, maybe you came from the senior citizen home that was burned out. Do you know the two hospitals were evacuated? This is astonishing what's going on. And I'm right here to report to you, not only the national, but the international news on the Savage Nation, and also to celebrate Columbus Day with you, and also ask you which vermin are trying to deface our statues. As far as I'm concerned, they should be arrested immediately. It's one thing to protest. It's another thing to destroy. And I am sick and tired of the radical left destroying my nation. I want DHS to wrap them up and put them in prison. I want anyone defacing any statue, whatever it may be, without a court order to be thrown in prison. And I mean hard time. I don't mean a slap on the wrist and a reward to go back to their girlfriends with a whistle the next day and say what fun they had in jail with their other friends. I want them thrown in jail for six months, and I want them to do hard time. I don't want my country torn down. And whoever is funding these rats tearing down our statues, I don't know who it is. I want them thrown in jail as a conspirator. I don't know who is funding these vermin. I want them jailed. That's my opening. This is the Savage Nation. Fire. Columbus Day. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We are talking about this massive, massive firestorm throughout uh, Napa and Sonoma counties. And there's something that uh, many people are not discussing. Many of you listening around the country, when you say this, say, I think that's where the wine country is. Well, you're right. But it's also an agricultural area. Sonoma County farms have 30,000 dairy cows and 35,000 sheep and goats. Did you hear what I just said to you? 30,000 dairy cows, 35,000 sheep and goats, where are they going to go? And produce farmers, those who provide vegetables for California, they are at the height of early fall harvest. The fire is closing in on their fields, which are full of end-of-season tomatoes or fall's winter squash. They have had to evacuate. So don't think this is limited to a few trailer parks. The fact of the matter is, the rumors are not very good right now. There are flowers in the field that are waiting to be harvested. There were 6,000 to 7,000 pounds of harvested winter squash and onions in storage. There are fruit trees that were ready to bear. Fall produce, summer produce, it doesn't mean anything to Harvey Weinstein, I'm sure, or to Matt Damon. I'm sure it doesn't ring a bell with the Hollywood crowd, but it rings a bell with those who work the land for a living. But what about the animals? What's going to happen there? We're going to some eyewitnesses, people who are actually in the area on, uh, on, on the Savage Nation. We're going to Alan on KSFO right here in San Francisco. Alan, tell us the story. What have you seen? What happened? Hey, Michael. It's been, it's been horrendous. I've, <clears throat> I've lived in Santa Rosa 50 years and uh, never thought this would happen. But I, I was a witness to the whole thing up by uh, the Hilton, uh, uh, the Kmart, the Wells Fargo Center up there. I live right next to it, and it swept down the hillside I'm on at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. I barely got out with my son and my dog, right? We, we escaped um, the na what, horses next, next door to us. Our, our neighbor's house was in flames as we drove off. Did you say the horses were on the ground next door? Well, they, they, they live next door. I, I, houses, uh, horses and chickens, I, I just can assume that they're all... How are they going to get the, ho the horses out of there? Where are they taking them? I'm sure they're dead. And this swept in at 2 o'clock in the morning like a raging, just a raging So wait, wait. So you ran out of the house. Your house burned to the ground. Where, where'd you go, Alan? Where'd you run? 
Yeah, we won't believe it. I had friends across town, and then I went to my, my mother, who's at a convalescent hospital on the other side of town, which, is, which was being evacuated at the same time. So they're evacuating uh, the convalescent hospital. God in heaven. It's, it's, you know, Alan, it leads me to ask myself, what would anyone do in your situation? Did you have a, a what did they call it, a grab bag, a run bag? Ready to go? I'm prepared. I, I didn't think it was going to happen. I looked at it. Michael, it was unbelievable. The hillside, there, it was like cannon fire going off, and I could see glo- it was glowing on the other side of the hill. Explosions, and then uh, uh, the most bizarre, almost like a lightning flash from the ground up, a two-second flash of what looked like lightning. And I said, what, what, what do you mean? Uh, okay, I understand the fire. Does fire do that? Does fire cause that kind of a, uh, in, does it cause that kind of sound? It was either it was either transformers exploding, oh. trees just detonating as they caught fire. This thing was moving so fast that it was it was cannon fire. So you lost your house with all your possessions, everything in it. Everything. I left. You'll love this. I left with my gun, my passport, and my computer. That's all I was able to yeah, leave. Well, I, I was asking you. You know, it's an interesting question that none of us ever think about. What would you take if you had only a few minutes to run out of your house or apartment? Do people even think about these things or not? Well, I, I probably should have. I, I was on the news watching for two hours ahead of time. I just didn't think it was going to happen. I had plenty of time. All oh, you saw it elsewhere. You didn't think it was going to hit your hill. No. They were reporting that the fire was in Napa, you know, you know, and I, and I was watching it, but I could smell smoke. And then I went out on my back deck, and I heard I heard these explosions, and I go, what, what is going on? Uh, it, it was, well, Alan, all, you know, you, I'll give you a, a, a homily, but I do pray to God for you and your family and everyone else affected by this. What more can I say at this time? It may sound like it may sound like empty words. They're not empty words. I don't know what this is going to do to the whole San Francisco area, but this is an astonishing story because many people are reporting these fires all started at about the same time. We'll leave it at that. What would you, the listener in New York? or in Dallas, Texas, do if you had five minutes to evacuate your house. Do you have what's called, what do they call that, an emergency bag, a grab bag? What's the name for that thing? What do you do with your possessions? What do you do if you have gold? What do you do if you have guns? What do you do if you have your documents? Where are they? Would you be ready to run and flee? This is going to make me and everyone else I know be prepared. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. you indigenous people's day people let me hear your music what does your music consist of grunting what do you mean indigenous people what do you have a nose flute my friend phil writes the following about columbus day he's a proud italian he still has bullet wounds in his body from the vietnam war and he's a silver star recipient he's a great man his father was another great american hero and he has this to say if it weren't for columbus unless they're from an indigenous group the protesters wouldn't be here america would not exist and the people in this hemisphere would still be living off the land. In the area with I, which I live in now, they'd be living in mud huts and eating roots and limpets. As an American whose family came from Italy, I'm proud of Columbus, Vespucci, who gave his name to America, uh, Fermi, and all the other Italians who helped make our nation great. So when the pro- progue tards whine about white privilege, I think of all the sweat and hard work my forebears put in to enable me to have the opportunity I've had, and I say, damn right, not Italian-American, American. Now, the fact of the matter is this started in Berkeley, California in 1992. And then, you know, Berkeley, California has been run by some of the sickest puppies America has ever produced. We cannot let this poison to spread. And there is a way to stop this poison. And it's already starting. It's starting on the college campuses where even they, the liberals, have recognized what's going to happen. Because Black Lives Matter, which is a fascist group, everybody knows that, has gone so far as to shut down the ACLU free speech events. The other day, the Black Lives Matter fascist thugs stopped an ACLU leader from speaking at the College of William & Mary, who was speaking, no doubt, about free speech. And the Black Lives Matter vermin screamed out, 
Liberalism is white supremacy. Liberalism is white supremacy. Well, now the ACLU is shocked. Here in San Francisco, good Democrat liberals, and there are many, they come from an old line of Democrat liberal traditions. And as I've said a thousand times on this show, if I've said it once over these 20 some odd years, a bird needs two wings to fly, a left wing and a right wing. But if you only have left wings and the right wing is cut off or tied down, the bird flies in circles. And that's what San Francisco has been doing for years. It's the filthiest city in the Western Hemisphere. I have a friend who's visited from another city, and we love this city. We love the parade. He said he's never seen such violence from the bums in the street. There's human feces in the street. In fact, yesterday after we left the Columbus Day Parade, I have to tell you the side story. We walked down towards the um, ferry terminal, and there's a small grassy park, a little knoll that you walk through. There was a bum in that park with a golf club screaming at everyone. And I was with my friend and two, thank God, security guards at the time. I saw that guy with the club. He was a madman. And I know he was going to kill somebody. Well, I certainly notified everyone saw this coming and the guards got in front of us. This guy was an inch away from swinging and cracking someone's head open. But he didn't do it. He probably evaluated four men and figured, you know what, even I'm liable to get hurt here, even with the police protecting me, even with the psychos who run the city, I'm liable to really wind up hurt. So he made believe that he didn't see us. But he continued to yell, well, listen to this. Later that night, or was it this morning, I get a report from my friend in the downtown hotel that he heard from the doorman that that very same bum with the golf club got into a swinging fight with another bum would you believe this? With another, a guy had a battery. This is what's going on in San Francisco. This city is out of control. The corruption is so rampant that the vermin who run the city, who take, took it over, the fake liberals, the fake liberals like Aaron Peskin, who make believe that they're good guys and on the, on the, on the side of the left, they're the ones who empower the vermin in the streets. They're the ones who make sure the streets are broken and covered with feces. And let me tell you something. The good liberals of this city, those who built this city, those whose parents and grandparents built this city have had enough of the left. That's what's going on in this country. And now back to all the other stories of the day, including Columbus Day and the fire up in Sonoma, the fires in Sonoma and Marin. Even the rotten leftist demagogue, New York's mayor, Bill de Blasio, has said this about Columbus Day. You can debate the historical figure of Christopher Columbus but you can't debate the contribution of Italian-Americans to this country. That's even the rotten leftist demagogue, New York Mayor de Blasio, even he admitted that. You may not know this, but many Italians who migrated to the U.S. initially had a very rough time. So stop belly aching to me about how hard you have it. You sit here on welfare, or you work and your wife doesn't work and your 12 children don't work. The Italians had no welfare. In 1891, 11 Italians were lynched in New Orleans by a mob who said they were responsible for the death of a policeman. So don't tell me everyone else had it easy and you're having it hard. If you don't like it, you go back to the third world hellhole you snuck out of and don't dump your garbage on our shores. It's enough already. Began in Berkeley, California, who got rid of Columbus Day in favor of Indigenous Peoples Day in 1992. How advanced can you be? Many places have adopted Indigenous Peoples Day since then, including Alaska, blah, blah, blah. But let me tell you something. Let's call it Italian Heritage Day and end this nonsense right now. Let's call it Italian Heritage Day and move on. It's enough division. Or shall we now focus on some other days, such as Martin Luther King Jr. Day? Why is that day sacrosanct while Columbus Day is not? Am I equating the two? Absolutely not. But one celebrates the national pride of a people, as does the other. And therefore, both deserve to exist. The fact of the matter is, Columbus's arrival in the New World under the sponsorship of Spain was probably very bad for the indigenous peoples of Hispaniola, the island he colonized that is now split between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. We know about the forced servitude. But how many of their descendants are living here in San Francisco, Berkeley, or New York? Near none. So it's just, again, white communist leftists who are glomming on to indigenous people's grievances to tear America apart. And it's enough is enough. And by the way, 
there are laws against the defacement of statues, and I want the laws fully enforced. And I want all, all Italians listening to me, don't roll over to these vermin. Fight back. Stick with Columbus. Now, more reports from the uh, Sonoma, live, uh, Sonoma uh, Napa area. I'm very excited right now. I've been up since 3.30 in the morning, by the way, since this. I've inhaled nothing but fumes all night long, even down here in Marin County. I was going to go to San Francisco and do the show today, but I heard the fire was bad down there too, so I'm not down there right now. Let's get some calls on the livestock. What about the thousands of cows and sheep and the, and the chickens? You may laugh and say that nothing to that. Well, what about it? You want it to burn alive? You think that's a joke? Lisa on KSFO, what, what's going on with the livestock evacuations up there? Yeah, I got a call from a friend. Um, her in-laws live there, and they were evacuated this morning, and they have horses. And so they were evacuated to the fairgrounds. And she just got a call, and I guess now they're talking about evacuating the fairgrounds. So she's trying to figure out where they can take the horses. And I live down in Modesto. We have a couple pastors, so I told her they, she could bring them here. They could bring them here. Um, but I mean, well, I, I, I appreciate those with small, let us say, show horses. They can get them out of there. But what about farms with twenty thousand cattle? I'd like to hear from someone. Thank you, Lisa. I'd like to hear from someone who actually has a working farm who has thousands of dairy cows or sheep or goats. I want to know what you're doing with your animals. Are they burning alive? And we don't know about that. Are there any firefighters out there who can tell us what the word is on the street with the guys who are manning the hoses? Who do they think started this fire, if anyone did it? Or were they spontaneous simply because of the high, the, the high season? Let's put it to you that way. Extremely dry, a tinderbox right now. Who started this fire, or, or were the fires simply spontaneously ignited? Are, any, are there any firefighters who have a hint? Have you found anything in any of the fire zones that are questionable? I'd like to know about that. WABC Eddie, New York City, what's your topic? Go ahead, please. Hi, Dr. Savage. Uh, I'm an Italian-American, U.S. Navy, Vietnam veteran. And uh, I'd just like to say that if people want to be so historically accurate, Columbus was flying under the flag of Spain, and it was the Spanish conquistadores who perpetrated the vast majority of these uh, violations of human rights. Yes, Columbus did have a hand in it, but he, he actually did protect some tribes from one against each other. I don't think we have to parse what Columbus did or didn't do. All we know is that if Columbus had not discovered America, most of the people who are bellyaching wouldn't be here to begin with. They'd be back in the hellholes they came from. So what are they complaining about? What does it have to do with their daily lives? Nothing. All they want to do is step on the Italian people. That's all this is about, is stepping on Italian heritage. And you better stand up to them and not be so intellectual with them. There are more of you than there are them, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say the Italian people have become too passive in this country, in plain English. That's what I think. I'm sick and tired of it. Fight back, Italians. Don't let these fakers tell you it's Indigenous People's Day. It's white communists behind all of it. It's that simple. 855-400-7282. Let's calm down for a minute. I've got to calm down for a minute because this is a very, very intense day for me out here on many fronts. One, I've been up all night, and I don't want to make a real mistake. I made only a few so far today. Uh, let's go to a nice thing today. Go and look at the picture of Michael Savage talking to some beautiful children at Columbus Day outside Pinocchio Restaurant. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven children avidly listening to me in my Panama hat and my white linen blazer. And I'm telling them, I don't know what I was telling them. In fact, I, I'm not even going to say what I was telling them. But I had their rapt attention. It was fabulous to be around those children. I forgot how beautiful it is to be around so many children. I mean, teachers have a wonderful life if they have a good school and good kids. Children are the most beautiful and precious thing on the planet. And why should Italian children be picked on by these white communists who are telling them that they should be, they, they should be ashamed of their heritage? Do you understand what this does to Italian children? Do you understand what racism this really is of tearing down Columbus statues? And have you seen the faces of most of the people who are the most violent in pulling down these statues? Have you looked carefully at who they really are? There are laws against this. They should be arrested and put in jail in the hard, hardest jail possible for this crime for six straight months, especially in a prison where there's a large Italian-American population of prisoners. Maybe they could learn 
some Italian-American heritage from the Italian-American prisoners during their six months of incarceration. Because I think if the Italian-American prisoners had the opportunity to teach some of these left-wing vermin who are tearing down Columbus statues something of the Italian heritage during the incarceration period, I suspect they will come out truly reformed from their experience behind bars with the kind and sensitive Italian-American inmates. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be, bri- I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Sooner or later, your car's going to break down. It's a fact every car, truck, and SUV owner knows for true. Look, if you're lucky, it happens while you're still under the manufacturer's warranty and the repairs are covered. But what if it happens after the warranty expires? You could be out of pocket thousands to get it fixed, which is why I recommend getting extended coverage like I did from CarShield.com. A new engine, a new tranny could cost you over $5,000. Even a simple repair to a sensor can cost you over $1,000 today. Why don't you skip that hassle? CarShield makes the whole process easy. You select your favorite mechanic, or you could even go to the dealership to do the work. No checks in the mail, no waiting for reimbursement. CarShield gets the mechanic paid directly. CarShield's administrators even give you the VIP treatment, providing 24-7 roadside assistance and a rental car while yours is in the shop. You're not going to be left stranded in the cold, believe me. If your car is 3 to 12 years old, it doesn't mean you have to pay high repair bills. CarShield administrators have paid out close to $2 billion in claims, and they're ready to help you. So save yourself thousands in potential car repairs. Get covered by the ultimate extended vehicle service protection before it's too late. All you got to do is call 800-CAR-6100. It's that simple. 800-CAR-6100. Mention Savage or visit carshield.com code Savage, and you will save 10%. Write it down, please. 800-CAR-6100. Savage. That's carshield.com code Savage. A deductible may apply. We're now talking about... The fires up in the Napa and Sonoma areas. We're talking about the Columbus Day parades around the country today and the vermin and what should be done to them who are trying to tear down Italian heritage. And I want to know why the Italians are not more militant about their pride. What happened to Italian pride? Where did it go? How did it end all of a sudden? How do you let a bunch of verminous left-wing drug addicts do this to you? Jim on KSFO, welcome to the program. You're a battalion fire chief. Tell us what's going on up there. Um, well, there's uh, quite a few crews that have been called up. Uh, I work in the Bay Area. We had an Office of Emergency Services engine from our organization go, as well as uh, multiple other engines and another battalion chief as a strike team leader. So uh, that jurisdiction obviously was overwhelmed, and they uh, put the call out for you know massive amounts of resources. So uh, you know everybody's obviously converging on that area as uh, what they call uh, initial attack. So all are they getting are they getting any of the fires under control, Jim? We just lost ISDN coverage. Robert, are we still connected? Okay, that was a phone collapse, not an ISDN collapse. We got very bad cell service up there right now. Uh, let's go to New York City to WABC. Vito was at Columbus Day Parade in Manhattan today. Vito. What did you see going on in the streets of Manhattan today during the parade? Well, you were just seeing a great celebration. A lot of people are not going to be deterred by the, these. Uh, they're American haters. That's all they are. And you know what, Mike? A million people built Western civilization. But there are three men who laid down the foundation. The first guy was Charles Martel. As the Islamic invasion was going across North Africa and into Spain, he crushed it when they tried to go into, into France or all the Europe would have been Islamic. Thank Amen. Columbus, Christopher Columbus told the Europeans there's a big piece of rock out there in the Western Hemisphere as he found it. And the third guy is George Washington, who shook off a empire and turned down being a king unheard of. Those are the men who laid the foundation. The rest of us 
Western civilization was created by a million people. They're trying to wreck it now. They got their giant wrecking ball going through it, and they're going to take out everything. George Washington. No, they're taking out nothing. No, no, they're going to be put in prison if they keep this up. I can guarantee you the tide is turning against the left-wing vermin. They're going to prison. They're going to prison. You decimate, you defame a statue, you're going to jail. And we're going to lobby to put you in the hardest prisons in America with the largest population of Italian Americans possible. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. A fire mask to go to San Francisco. It's pretty bad out here. It's pretty bad. We got the fires up in Sonoma and uh, Napa. Thousands and thousands of people are being evacuated. We're still asking folks to call who have farms. What about the 20,000 dairy cows, the goats, the sheep, the horses? Where are they going? Where are they taking them? I don't know. There are other stories we're talking about, mainly how the white communist American movement is using uh, indigenous people, whatever that means. I don't know what an indigenous person is. But the indigenous people, the troublemakers who have no jobs except to uh, cause disturbances and rip down statues to spit on the Italian-Americans in this country by decimating the name of Columbus. Now, there's a couple other stories I want to talk about that I haven't gotten to. Over the weekend, I saw this. I said this can't be true, but only in California could this be true, the insanity. Are you ready? California lowers penalty for knowingly exposing partners to HIV. Listen to what I just said to you. Listen to what the nut job California Governor Jerry Moonbeam Brown just did. Let's say you have uh, AIDS, HIV, and then you have sex with someone and you don't disclose that you have the infection. At this time, it is a felony to do so. Wouldn't that make sense, knowingly giving someone a disease like this? Not to Jerry Brown. It's now a misdemeanor. The California legislature of fools passed SB 239 on September 11th. The law previously punished people who knowingly exposed or infected others knowingly with HIV by up to eight years in prison. The new legislation will lower jail time to a maximum of six months. The new law also reduces the penalty for knowingly donating HIV-infected blood from a felony to a misdemeanor. Now, can anyone explain to me how this could be, why this is sensible? The sponsors of this bill should be put in jail. Senator Scott Wiener is a criminal for doing this. Assemblyman Todd Gloria, both left-wing fanatical Democrats, had the nerve to argue that California law was outdated and stigmatized people living with HIV. Does that make sense to anybody? Did you hear what I just said to you? These lunatics have now said, if you knowingly give someone HIV by having sex with them, or you knowingly donate HIV-infected blood, don't worry about it. It's going to be a slap on the wrist because we're permissive in California. We are a tolerant state, and we're so tolerant that it's okay to give someone HIV. For what reasons, I don't know. But this psychopath, Scott Weiner, said that by destigmatizing HIV, the bill would encourage people to get tested? That doesn't make any sense to me. This will clearly lead to an increase in HIV infections. I totally think this is insane. The fact of the matter is, Mr. Weiner's idea that modern medicine can lower the spread of HIV is nonsense. And I will tell you why. The senator, Senator Jeff Stone, a Republican, the only one who makes sense, said three out of four people who are on prescription meds in the U.S., do not comply with their doctor's orders on how to take the drugs. 
That's another topic. 84-year-old Senator Dianne Feinstein is running for re-election next year. She made up her mind over the weekend. And she said she's doing it because of climate change and gun reform, not because of the grift that she can get out of the deal. She's doing it. She's going to run again, not for the power madness that she's been known for. She'll be 85 on election day. If she were to win, she'd be 91 by the time her term ended. Feinstein cited climate change and gun reform as incentives for her to continue working in the Senate. Meanwhile, in Nevada, we haven't forgotten the massacre. A so-called professor is blaming the Las Vegas massacre on roll of the drums, Donald Trump. We have that sound. Meanwhile, the madness continues. A British man, Jamie Harron, is facing jail in Dubai for, for touching a man, to, a man to avoid spilling a drink. He tapped the man on the shoulder to avoid spilling a drink, and they're putting him in jail in the wonderful advanced Arab nation of Dubai. Isn't diversity wonderful? 855-407-282. By the way, in California, there's a hepatitis A outbreak that's on the verge of a statewide epidemic, and uh, Jerry Brown has done nothing about that. Done nothing about that. Done nothing about that. Harvey Weinstein officially fired from the Weinstein Company. Big deal. Crashes try to disrupt Columbus Day ceremony in New York. They should be put in prison. Trump administration sends Congress a three-part immigration reform agenda. I can't wait to see what happens with that one. Lawmaker takes first step to remove Columbus Day statue in New York City. Take a look at that, that doll's face. Vegas killer described his unusual habits in 2013 testimony. I don't even want to read them. This is a family show. And here's another one on michaelsavage.com. Ex-Times reporter says Oscar winners called in to help Weinstein out of 2004 Jam. This is a very important story. We know that actors are just actors and marionettes. We know that they're just full of it in plain English. Well, this shocking story about Harvey Weinstein's alleged, um, I don't even know the word to use for it. But in 2004, the story was about to be run. But now a former Times reporter claims that the New York Times could have exposed Weinstein over 10 years ago, but the story was watered down by editors after a visit from Weinstein and calls from two of Hollywood's biggest names. You know who they are? Take a guess which two of the biggest names went and called the New York Times to kill the Weinstein story. Two of the biggest liberals in Hollywood history, Matt Damon and Russell Crowe. Now what's intriguing about this is that Matt Damon is very well known for his activism when it comes to climate change. Now, where do we believe Matt Damon now? That he actually believes that he cares about climate change, he actually knows the science? Or that Harvey Weinstein was not a predator back in 2004? Which one of those stories is he lying about? I can't decide. Now, Matt Damon is a big, is a big shot on global warming. And uh, we don't know whether he's sincere about it. We have no reason to think he is because he's only an actor. And as you all know, actors simply read scripts. Those are other stories I want to talk to you about. But here's a really good news story. University approves policy that will allow them to expel or suspend protesting students. That is a good story. That is a good story. University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents voted on the new punishments for students who have already been charged with disrupting others' free expression. Those who offend a second time will be suspended. Rat bums who disrupt a third time will be expelled, according to the Associated Press. Good for the University of Wisconsin. At least they're standing up to the left-wing rats. WABC, Kevin, what's your topic? Welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hello, Dr. Savage. A big fan of yours and your show. Big admirer. Uh, about Columbus Day. I'm not sure how it got co-opted into Italian Day, but if you, every every kid of our generation recalls uh, 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, got the money from Queen Isabel and King Ferdinand in the name of Spain. Columbus was actually from Genoa in 1492. Italy wasn't even a country until 370 years later. And it seems to have become Italian Day, when it should be America's Day. So while well, well, let's not say what you think it should be. It simply should be Italian Heritage Day. And anyone who defaces a statue should be put in prison for six months, especially in a prison that is predominantly occupied by members of the ethnic group that they are offending. 
So if they offend African Americans, for example, by defacing an African American statue, they should be put in a prison that is largely African American uh, inmates. If they deface, let us say, an Israel Independence Day uh, celebration, why the left wing rat should be put in a prison with some Jews who are in prison, let's say Jews from Mossad or from uh, uh, organizations like that, and maybe they can learn something about Jewish a culture and tradition from the members of the uh, Israeli mafia who were in prison. Maybe they would learn something about Jewish heritage in prison because it's a learning experience. Jail is a learning experience. And I think the, uh, the, uh, the protesters, who are all college students and well-meaning, of course, want to learn as much as they can about various cultures. So if you deface a Columbus statue and I'm in charge, you're going to a prison which has a large Italian-American population for six months. Because in that prison with Italian-American prisoners, you're going to learn a lot about their culture. They're going to teach you the way they teach each other. You're going to learn a lot about Italian-American culture in prison. That's where you're going. You deface an African-American uh, symbol or statue, you're going to a prison where African-Americans are a large proportion of the population. And the African-American prisoners will teach you a lot about their culture, especially jail culture to people like you. And of course, you'll try to use your tactics of blowing a whistle or calling the New York Times, but no one will be there to help you. And you will come out a changed girl. You will come out a different girl. You will come out a different person altogether and a better one at that. Well, I'm running short of time on the Savage Nation. These are some of the topics I'm talking about. We'll play some sound uh, from the two Feinsteins. It's Harvey Feinstein and Diane Weinstein. I don't know Who's who anymore? It's Feinstein and Weinstein, the fires and Columbus Day, right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. So the left-wing fanatics are trying to erase Columbus Day. To most of us, Columbus is a hero. There's a great article on this by Scott Greer of The Daily Caller that I will paraphrase and reflect on with you, which is this. He says Columbus always had his detractors in the U.S. I didn't know that. In the early 20th century, waspy nativists weren't fond of honoring an Italian Catholic as the discoverer of America at a time when Italian Catholics were immigrating en masse to America. These anti-Columbus Americans at that time wanted to honor Leif Erikson. Leif Erikson is a Nordic who the new immigrants from Southern Europe couldn't claim as their own. This is interesting. And he says that the reason for the old animosity of Columbus was due to his status as a symbol for Catholics and Italians. And the reason for the new animosity towards Columbus Day is the view that European discovery of America was a great crime that we should look at with shame, not honor. Well, let me remind all of you who think that that is true. Can I remind you of something? Are you ready? If it was not for Columbus, without this Genovese explorer, very few of us would be on this continent right now, and the United States would never have come into being, which goes to the whole point of why the leftists are attacking Columbus because it's the core of the founding of the United States of America. They want to take this country apart at the joints. The fact of the matter is, the idiots believe that before Columbus arrived, all the Native American tribes were living in perfect harmony with one another and with nature. That is total crap. The Native tribes were decimating each other and killing each other. They were vicious, bloodthirsty monsters. No, they were not all peace-loving uh, noble savages, as many of you think. If you want to honor anybody, who should we honor? We should celebrate Italian-American heritage is what we should do. But if you want to imagine the natives as peaceful people who were living in harmony with each other, you're a fool. In fact, one of the first tribes Europeans came in contact with were the extremely violent Caribs, a name that cannibal was derived from. You didn't know any of that? You didn't learn that at uh, PS22? 
Did you hear what I just said? Amongst the first tribes that European, quote, evil colonists came in contact with were the violent Caribs, a name that cannibal was derived from. And according to the great historian Samuel Eliot Morrison, the derivation of that word owes to the people's fondness for eating their fellow man, and they also ferociously fought the Spanish and lost. But what about the peace-loving Aztecs, many of whom's descendants are now working in America? so-called indigenous people, the Aztecs. Do you know about the peace-loving Aztecs and their wonderful civilization? What was going on amongst the peace-loving Aztecs when the Spanish came in contact with them? Hmm? Well, the Aztec society was built around human sacrifice. And the primary aim of Aztec warfare was not to kill their enemies, but to capture the opposing warriors in order to slaughter them in their grisly rituals. That's an example of the indigenous peoples that you think are so sacred, the so-called noble savage. The tribes here in North America that the English settlers encountered were also violent and unwelcoming to the newcomers. The fact of the matter is, the Europeans won this conflict, and I'm not ashamed of it, and you shouldn't be either. But let's get focused on Columbus Day. Let's talk about Columbus Day. Why shouldn't we just call it Italian Heritage Day since that is what has become more or less Italian heritage? I don't believe the indigenous peoples are our real founders at all. I think that's total rubbish, and I'm not guilty about it. And I want you to understand that they're trying to tear down all the symbols and figures of this great nation of ours and try to make us apologize for it. The fact of the matter is, without Columbus, most of the people complaining about Columbus wouldn't even be in the United States of America because there would be no United States of America. And that's it. But what about the biggest story of HIV? Did you miss that story that I just told you? California just legalized knowingly passing the HIV virus. Doesn't that shock you and show you how, how insane this, state, this government is? WABC Line 3. Parker, what's your topic? Hi. Dr. Savage, um, I just think it's crazy to think that uh, all over America, people are just forgetting about common knowledge and science. Um, I go to school at WVU, and it's rampant here. People just ignore modern science. California just lowered the penalty for knowingly exposing partners to HIV. This is how insane the city is. They're trying to override common sense and common scientific knowledge. You understand that, Parker? Yes, sir. It's, it's crazy. How can you say if you have AIDS or HIV, you're actively infected, and you go and have sex with someone, and you don't tell them in advance, that's not a felony anymore. That's only a misdemeanor. That's what Jerry Brown just signed. It flies in the face of common sense common medical sense, common epidemiology, but then Jerry Brown is known for that. So what else is new under the sun? Maybe someone who gets HIV now can sue Jerry Brown in the state of California for knowingly permitting people to knowingly transfer HIV. Would that make sense to you? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Are there any firefighters listening to the show today, the Savage Nation, who are up in these fire areas in Sonoma or in Napa County who have any on the ground? stories to tell, and I don't mean just the human interest stories. I mean, are you finding any evidence of arson? Are you find any evidence, have you found any evidence to indicate these fires are not all spontaneous? Because a lot of people are very suspicious that so many massive fires started at about the same time last night. They don't think they're all spontaneous. We don't expect Jerry Brown to ever tell us the truth about anything, so we're asking firemen on the ground, I mean, you're learning anything, or is it just spontaneous combustion? Is that what we're supposed to believe? I don't have any calls on that. We're also talking about Columbus Day and Italian Heritage Day. We're also talking about the insanity of California, where Jerry Brown 
and his cohorts just reduced the crime of knowingly transferring HIV, whether through sex, needles, or blood transfusions, knowingly, listen to what I just said, the guy knows he has HIV, he knowingly has sex with someone, doesn't disclose it, the person gets HIV, it is no longer a felony. Are you telling me that's sane? Are you telling me that's not a criminal law unto itself? Are you telling me people who pass a law like this in order to appease certain groups are not committing a crime against common sense and against medical science itself? I would disagree with you. Okay. With these fires, a lot of questions are coming up. What if you had only a few minutes to evacuate your house or apartment? What would you take with you? Do you have a go bag? Have you really put it together? Do you have a go bag? What would you put in it? I mean, there's obvious stuff you'd put in it like cash, gold, diamonds, watches, stuff like that. What are you going to put all that stuff in a bag every night when you go to sleep? Make it convenient for a burglar? So I don't know what people have in a go bag. I don't know how people put these things together. Uh, it's an interesting question now that people up here in the California area are, are facing the fire. Eric on KSFO, what's your topic? Yes, Mr. Savage, how are you today, sir? What's on your mind? Uh, I, well, see, I'm in a debate of a lifetime with, uh, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is right in the heart of, of Indian country, right? Um, and my, my wife is Native American, my daughters are Native American, and and but we still celebrate and give thanks to Christopher Columbus because he may not have discovered America for America, but he discovered America for the rest of the world. And had he not done that, single-handedly done that, we it could have took generations or hundreds of years to discover that this land was here. And so the reason why we are here is because he took the chance to find a faster route to India for trade. And yeah, so let's, let's pause right there. First of all, every statement you've made is... It, un, it's not debatable. It's all true. Number two, at the time, it was considered, it was equivalent of an astronaut going to another planet. Right. They thought he was going to fall off. It was one of the greatest sea voyages of the time. Yes, one correct. of the greatest sea voyages of the time. And so, it was astonishing in those small boats to go so far. And, of course, these vermin who are attacking him should recognize the greatness of Christopher Columbus as a navigator and seaman unto, unto themselves. But you still celebrate the holiday. Why? Well, because in, in, in our thinking is that it, it, that's the reason why we celebrate it, because he was a monumental figure who discovered this land for the rest of Europe. And the reason why we are here today is because he discovered it. Now, right, I, so what are you what are you going to do to save Christopher Columbus's as a holiday and statues in your area? Well, that's. That's the reason why I'm calling you to ask your opinion on whether or not you think it's a noble cause or I should even continue to do it, is I am in the debate with the school program because they allow my children to take off days like Martin Luther King Day, which, I mean, absolutely a wonderful man and did so much for every for civil rights movement and all that stuff, but is not a bigger figure in our mind than Christopher Columbus. Just as big, I, I, I would say, but not bigger. So why do my children not have that day off to celebrate Christopher Columbus and what he did for the rest of the world. So, Eric, that's a very good idea. So why don't you, what you're saying is you want to bring legal action against the school district or whoever tries to decimate your heritage. And I think that's a very good idea. I just got this flash on the Savage Nation that may answer some of the questions about the forest fires. This comes to us from pjmedia.com. Um, ISIS in January say set fire to forest areas adjacent to residential areas. Did you hear what I just said? ISIS in January said set fire to forest areas adjacent to residential areas. Could it be these vermin who have penetrated this nation, these rats, these invading rats, and you know who I'm talking about. You don't like it, you can lump it. Could it be the invading rats that Obama ushered in in every way possible were not screened at all and that amongst the invaders there were some ISIS members who are now doing us harm? Is that possible? It's not logically impossible, is it? Are you looking into that, Governor Brown? Have you authorized your highway patrol to investigate whether ISIS is behind some of these forest fires or is that too politically challenging for you, Mr. Brown. I think it's a very important story. 
Andrew on WABC Line 2. What's on your mind, Andrew? Hello, good evening. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Savage. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about multiculturalism and how it, it, how it boils down to um, what's happening with the defacing of the idols of the country, the, the, the shaming and defacing of Western culture as a whole. This is, in my opinion, this is the end result, this is the end game, or at least getting close to the end game of what we call multiculturalism. The idea that, and I'll quote Thomas Sowell, the great African-American author, economist, I'm sure you know him, that yeah. he said multiculturalism boils down to that you can praise any culture in the world except Western culture, and that you cannot blame any culture in the world except Western culture. And that is essentially what is taking place here. Where, uh, do, you, um, do you agree with that? Well, it's an obvious statement. It's pretty well stated. But what's the point of, of repeating the obvious? What do you mean you can blame any, any culture? What's the point of saying that? I'm saying don't put up with it. My whole point is don't put up with this garbage. Just saying. I, don't, I, I mean, I can't stand it, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a young college student, actually, and, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm up to my knees in it, and it's, you know, I mean, multiculturalism is basically a denial of reality is what it is. It's people who just are, are using it as a way to devour. All right, let me help you and everyone else listening to the show. Let me give you what Dr. Savage is famous for. Uh, you think all cultures are equal. They're not. Not at all. All cultures are not equal. Some have given much more to civilization than others. Let's start with trains, planes, cars, rockets, telescopes, tires, telephones, radios, television, electricity, atomic energy, computers. These are all miracles made possible by the minds and spirits of men with names like Ampere, Bell, Caselli, Edison, Ohm, Faraday, Einstein, Cohen, Teller, Shockley, Hertz, Marconi, Morse, Popov, Ford, Volta, Michelin, Dunlop, Watt, Diesel, Galileo, and other so-called evil, dead white males. I hate to disappoint my friends on the extreme radical left, but the fact of the matter is everything I just said is true. And the rest of what I'm about to say is tantamount to blasphemy in this insane age. But my friends, truth is truth. How long are we going to pretend that origins play no role whatsoever in our world? The origins of the inventions, the science, the technology, the music, the poetry, the art, the economics of the world in which we live. Our present civilization is due to the revolution in electronics and computer technology. We all know that. Where to come from? Who designed most of these uh, these devices? I'm not trying to discredit the many contributions coming from, let us say, non-Caucasians. But fact is fact. And I know it's hard for you to understand it, and you want to curse me and all white males. But most importantly, you should know that almost all important and consequential inventions have come almost exclusively from white males. Now, if you call me a liar, you'll have to come up with the proof that I'm wrong. Remember, I am not saying that there were no important contributions from non-whites. I said the overwhelming majority. Of course, I know about such things as the Chinese and gunpowder. But they didn't take it much beyond firecrackers and pyrotechnics. And yes, 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 I know about the pyramids and masonry of South America and the zero of the Arabs. But I ask you, would we have atomic physics and electricity if it hadn't been for the ancient Greek philosophers? Who, for example, had the idea that all matter consists of tiny atoms? Aristotle, 5th century B.C., used electric charges to treat gout. Did you know that? Did you know that Archimedes perceived the center of gravity of solid cylinders and spheres? Did you know any of that? And from the basic discoveries of Greek civilization, it went to the Romans. And after the fall of Rome, it passed to later Europeans who expanded on the scientific knowledge. In modern times, these ideas were developed by such Europeans as Volta, Ampere, Watt, Bell, Edison, and Einstein, who provided the basis for most of the technical wonders of today. All of them dreaded white males, hated by the vermin on the college campuses. But wait, I know, maybe you got your enlightenment from one of the Ivy League institutions of disinformation. Maybe they taught you that it's all the result of white racism and oppression, that every time a potential Einstein Edison or Ford popped up in the third world, 
a white hit squad would swoop down and eliminate him before he had a chance to prove himself. Or maybe their schools refused to teach him in the language of the day. Or maybe they didn't have proper daycare facilities. Or maybe a would-be innovator came from a dysfunctional family. But the facts tell us that many of the great men pursued their genius at great personal risk, like the astronomer Galileo, who proved that the Earth revolves around the sun. He and other men of genius and courage refused to be suppressed, even if it meant their lives. They would permit no race, gender, group, or class to keep them from their pursuit of truth and excellence, whatever the cost. Where has there ever before in history been a group of human beings who have brought about the likes of the Magna Carta, the U.S. Constitution, and the countless life-saving and life-improving inventions that we all enjoy. So my friends, be very, very careful the next time you hear some hatred towards the white race, especially towards the white male. This comes from an article I wrote entitled White Male Inventions, written on December 15, 1999. My name is Michael Savage. What I just said to you is irrefutable. Now, I want to go to something else since I'm very sensitive to the fact that society is, fall, is falling apart. Many people don't know which way to turn. They have no idea what's up and what's down, no, not north, not south. Yesterday at Columbus Day, I told you I had a wonderful day, and I'm going to repeat it once again. I was in North Beach, which is an Italian district. When you say Italian district, it was fundamentally established by Italian people over 130, 40 years ago. And a lot of people came up to me and they said, Savage, I can't wait to read your God, Faith, and Reason book. We love your statement, The Search to Find God is Defining Itself. We're buying copies for our children. And I said to them one thing. I said, please pre-order God, Faith, and Reason right now, either from Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com, for one reason. If we can drive this book up to the top of the charts or near it, a book that's a long shot. Remember, it's a dark horse so to speak. It is a very, very long shot that this book is going to go to the top. When you consider people like Harvey Weinstein control every industry to do with entertainment, and that includes publishing, including the books that are published. If you look at the filth and the violence that's in bookstores, this dark horse, God, God, dark horse, God, faith, and reason is a very, very, very long, long shot to make it to the top of the charts. And so if you want to see God represented in this sick world of ours, I ask you to do the right thing. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Did you know that you can find out if your body is making enough nitric oxide simply by testing your own saliva? I've been raving about Super Beets. It's a great circulation superfood. You know why? Because it works. You see, you'll get more energy, more stamina in as little as 20 minutes. The good people at Super Beats include their new saliva indicator strips with every purchase. You use your own saliva to see changes in your nitric oxide level uh, when you use Super Beats. I love that Super Beats puts their money where their mouth is. And for a limited time with your first order, Super Beats will send you an entire month's supply of saliva indicator strips, a $25 value for free with your order. You also get a free book plus your first can of Super Beats for free. That's another $60 value also for free. So try it for yourself. Call 1-800-481-0504. Get a month's supply of indicator strips very, 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 very important to track those changes at a cellular level. 800-481-0504. More energy, more stamina while supporting healthy circulation. 800-481-0504. Or go to savagelovesbeats.com. Write it down, 800-481-0504. Or go to savagelovesbeats.com. These fires, were they started by arsonists? Now you say, oh, why do you say a thing like that? After all, the fire people would know that by now. No, they wouldn't. And even if they did, they couldn't arrest the person. I'll give you an example. About a year ago, 16 fires were started from one arsonist, and they couldn't arrest him. Cries were, string him up, and you're going to hell erupted outside a Lake County casino. 
on a smoky afternoon in 2016 as state firefighters unveiled a poster-sized mugshot of an arson suspect accused of burning hundreds of buildings two days before. But what investigators did not tell the crowd is that they knew the suspect. They had been closely tracking Damon Pashilk for two summers at the time because he allegedly set at least 16 Lake County wildfires before the big one. You may not know this, but after all of these fires, and they thought he did it, a prosecutor was writing a search warrant to arrest him. But state arson investigators didn't put him in cuffs until two days after a devastating Clayton fire erupted. That fire burned 300 buildings and torched nearly 4,000 acres of grass, brush, and tree and cost California taxpayers millions of dollars in firefighting expenses. Although he was arrested, Pashilk pled not guilty to 23 counts of arson and other charges, including a misdemeanor count of possessing methamphetamine. Apparently, he has nothing to do with these fires, but there is a high likelihood that there's another arsonist or arsonists, maybe even ISIS, behind this, ma- this madness in California. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. We are talking about this massive, massive firestorm throughout uh, Napa and Sonoma counties. And there's something that uh, many people are not discussing. Many of you listening around the country, when you say this, say, I think that's where the wine country is. Well, you're right. But it's also an agricultural area. Sonoma County farms have 30,000 dairy cows and 35,000 sheep and goats. Did you hear what I just said to you? 30,000 dairy cows, 35,000 sheep and goats. Where are they going to go? And produce farmers, those who provide vegetables, for California. They are at the height of early fall harvest. The fire is closing in on their fields, which are full of of end-of-season tomatoes or fall's winter squash. They have had to evacuate. So don't think this is limited to a few trailer parks. The fact of the matter is, the rumors are not very good right now. There are flowers in the field that are waiting to be harvested. There were 6,000 to 7,000 pounds of harvested winter squash and onions in storage. There are fruit trees that were ready to bear. Fall produce, summer produce, it doesn't mean anything to Harvey Weinstein, I'm sure, or to Matt Damon. I'm sure it doesn't ring a bell with the Hollywood crowd, but it rings a bell with those who work the land for a living. I don't know what this is going to do to the whole San Francisco area, but this is an astonishing story because many people are reporting These fires all started at about the same time. We'll leave it at that. What would you, the listener in New York or in Dallas, Texas, do if you had five minutes to evacuate your house? Do you have what's called, what do they call that, an emergency bag, a grab bag? What's the name for that thing? What do you do with your possessions? What do you do if you have gold? What do you do if you have guns? What do you do if you have your documents? Where are they? Would you be ready to run and flee? This is going to make me and everyone else I know be prepared. I woke up 325 a.m. thinking that my house was burning or some idiot was burning a log near my house. And then I looked out and the entire Bay Area was coated with a gray smog, a gray smoke. So I figured, okay, some fires up in the North Country. Ash was falling all over my deck. My white cushions were turning gray with ash. I was shocked as I woke up early in the morning to find out that it was more than just a small fire. The fact of the matter is the whole the whole area is on fire up there, and it's not getting under control very, very fast. I mean, we're not knocking the people who are trying to put it out. But, you know, most of you who have gone to the wine country understand what I'm saying to you. This is a big deal. Many wineries are not going to be standing after this. 
the wineries are right in the bowl of the fire. In addition to that, there is a, a, an extreme health has, hazard as the smoke is spreading throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. Governor Jerry Moonbeam Brown took time out from uh, condemning Donald Trump to declare a state of emergency and actually try to do something in the state of California. Cell service was down in parts of the North Bay. Smart train service was canceled uh, because of the morning fires. And I guess here's some good news. The fires are threatening a cannabis harvest. That's the only good news to save some brains uh, for the future. Talking about the massive 45,000 acre fire that is burning somewhat out of control in Napa and Sonoma County. Uh, counties, people are leaving the areas that we're talking about the wine country to the rest of America. This is a national story. It started, we don't know where, a Hilton burnt to the ground, a Kmart store burnt to the ground, a McDonald's, an Arby's, an Applebee's, a pizza shop. 175,000 people in Santa Rosa have been evacuated. Schools and businesses are shuttered. Two hospitals in Santa Rosa, those run by Kaiser Permanente and Stutter Health, evacuated. Power outages are widespread. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a massive fire. No one knows how it started. We can only guess. We can only guess, and believe me, theories are starting to circulate, and I will not repeat them. The fire has canceled many businesses, concerts, venues. People do not know what to do. Ash was falling from the sky around the Bay Area all the way into San Francisco. In fact, I got to tell you something. We went from heaven to hell overnight. Yesterday, Columbus Day, Blue Angels Day, was one of the most beautiful days of my life. The skies were perfect. The Blue Angels were stirring. The party at Pinocchio's restaurant was the most phenomenal party I've ever been to in my life. I was dancing. I was singing. In fact, I even tweeted a picture of myself with a bunch of young Italian kids, and I was telling them some stories. It was, it's a beautiful picture. you got to see it on michaelsavage.com. I was ready to talk about the beauty of Columbus Day, the parade, the multi-ethnic uh, value of this parade. It's not just Italians. It's fabulous to see. It's an America you never see. And I did want to talk about it. I also wanted to talk about Pinocchio Restaurant. What an incredible time we had. But I can't do that right now. I'm asking you if you're a fire witness. I want you to report to the Savage Nation and tell us what you are seeing. I don't know who started these fires. There are many other stories we're going to talk about. The 84-year-old Diane Feinstein, by the way, or is it Harvey Weinstein? I don't know. I'm confused. Is it Harvey Feinstein and Diane Weinstein? They're in the news right now. I don't know who's who at this point, but I know that one of the Feinsteins or Weinsteins is going to run again, but I don't think it's Harvey. I think it's Diane. Can you imagine that? And take a guess why this power-mad woman wants to run for office again. Why? It's because of global warming. I mean climate change. I mean whatever it's called now. And guns. That's what's making this power-mad woman want to run again. What a country we're living in. Uh, several Democrats have distanced themselves from Harvey Weinstein. Did you hear this story? Six more Senate Dems joined Vermont's Patrick Leahy in vowing to give away the campaign contributions they'd received from Weinstein over the years. It just shows you how loyal and what stand-up guys they are, right? What a great group of guys. Chuck Schumer is giving back the money to Weinstein. Kirsten Gillibrand giving back the money. Cory Booker of Jersey, Elizabeth Warren amassed. They're all giving back money that Weinstein gave them. They're real stand-up people, really solid human beings. And then did Weinstein make up a Jay-Z lyric? Play Stand By Your Man. I, want, I just want to hear it. And who's your hobby? Weinstein is trending now, apparently, on Twitter. What does that mean? I don't Look, you got to admire the guy. Come on. You know, a lot of it's like jealousy. When a big guy falls, everyone's jealous of his success. They want to see him fall. Even liberal Democrats are glad he got it because they, if you didn't make it as big as he did. He's got big enemies, by the way. He made huge enemies. I can't name. Well, one of them is already named. Everyone knows Spielberg and he have been vying for years uh, for Oscars. Uh, for example, director Steven Spielberg went up against Miramax and the Weinstein Company for Project and Oscars. And he refused to say anything about Weinstein while he was on the red carpet promoting a uh, HBO documentary about his career, Spielberg. So he didn't want to say anything. He said, it's a subject I don't shy from, but it's not relevant to what we're discussing about Susan's movie today. I have a lot of opinions about that, but not for this event tonight. Spielberg's Saving Private Ryan famously lost out for Best Picture to Weinstein's Shakespeare in Love at the 1999 Academy Awards. So, you know, there's a lot of 
But the fact of the matter is, now Weinstein is saying he's going to sue the Times for up to $50 million, and he brought in attorneys, big, big attorneys. But what's even more ironic than anything is that he hired this Lisa Bloom. Here is a woman who's represented one woman after the other with one complaint after the other. Most of us think it's all crap and made up. It's just trying to make money. That's what most people think about it anyway that I've seen. Now she's on the other side representing the other side. It just shows you, right, what it means to be a, that kind of lawyer. Reporters Jody Cantor and Megan Chwauhi, Tuhi spent six months to research the Weinstein story. And Weinstein says the editorial team only gave him 24 hours to respond. Harvey, you got more than I got when they try to slam me in certain newspapers. They didn't give me 24 seconds to respond, Harvey. And I didn't sue. The fact of the matter is, let it go, Harvey. You're making a big mistake. He shouldn't sue them. He should just let it drop. I got to say this. Weinstein denies the accusation leveled by actress Ashley Judd. That kicks off the story in which the Kiss the Girl star said she showed up to his hotel 20 years ago for a breakfast meeting to be greeted with talk of massages and watching him shower. Now, look, I haven't eaten lunch yet. But the thought of Harvey Weinstein giving me a massage or watching him shower is enough to kill my appetite for the rest of the year, i got to tell you. But all right, that's the way Hollywood works. But the thing is, is I think he's making a mistake. He should just drop the whole thing. Then there's another subtext of the, of the Weinstein scandal story that the New York Times is pushing. Weinstein backing his feminist attorney's new docuseries. Now, here's something really ironic. Lisa Bloom, in my opinion, is one of the worst people in the history of the human race. My estimation. I think she's one of the worst people I've ever seen walk on two legs. That's what I think of her as, a, as an attorney. Now, she's represented dozens of women who have accused men, rightly, wrongly, truthfully, or untruthfully, uh, of sexual harassment. Bill O'Reilly was attacked by her. Donald Trump was attacked by her. It's interesting to me that no liberals ever attacked by women or attacked by her. But now Lisa Bloom has turned her attention to debunking the women who are accusing Harvey Weinstein of sexual harassment. And this creature with a law degree is now representing Harvey Weinstein. But here's the, here's the rub. Are you ready? She's doing a series of movies, a docuseries on her wonderful work and her contributions to humanity uh, being produced by Harvey Weinstein. You talk about a, a closed shop. Now, Lisa Bloom is the daughter of feminist attorney Gloria Allred, another prize example of the legal profession and of honesty in the law. As you know, Gloria Allred is above any suspicion as to motivation, and she only represents honest women who accuse evil men, as you well know. And so, mother and daughter, shall we say the seltzer bottle doesn't fall far from the truck. Now, with regard to Columbus Day, don't think the Italians are taking it on their backs. They're fighting back. Are you ready how they're fighting back? They're not going to roll over to the Indigenous Peoples Day crowd. A movement to abolish Columbus Day and replace it with so-called Indigenous Peoples Day is certainly gaining momentum in leftist-run cities, but not everywhere. Because the man who opened the Americas to European, um, you should say conquest if you're one of the indigenous, but all you indigenous people, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Columbus You'd be back in your homeland cutting people's hearts out or having your own heart cut out. So stop with the nonsense. If it wasn't for Columbus, you'd be living in a cave or swinging from a tree or have your heart cut out. I'm sick and tired of this garbage. I am sick of it, and I'm not Italian. And eliminating their festival of ethnic pride is about as culturally insensitive as you can get. A man named Basil Russo, president of the Order of Italian Sons and Daughters of America, said, we had a very difficult time in this country for well over 100 years. Columbus Day is a day that we've chosen to celebrate who we are, and we're entitled to do that just as they're entitled to celebrate who they are. That is absolutely true, 100% right. And I'm sick of it. I'm totally sick of this because the Italians have had a very rough time in this country in the beginning. Nobody handed them anything. But they didn't go on welfare, and they didn't burn anyone's statues down. They broke their behinds in this country to build this country unlike the ungrateful bums who are coming in and sucking our welfare dry. You can take that to the bank. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. 
The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Now, normally a fire, even a large forest fire, would not be a national story. But this story about the fires that are spreading in Napa and Sonoma counties is of great national concern because the director of California Fire Department, the California Fire Director, Ken Pimlot, is reporting that the fires are burning throughout an eight-county swath of Northern California. Did you hear what I just said? Eight counties at once, Napa, Sonoma, Yuba counties. And firefighters from as far as way as San Diego have been called into action. Now, how did all these fires start at the same time? Are we supposed to hear that we don't know that they just jumped over the, the crest and went into the next county? Why should we assume that there is not arson when arson has been involved before? The answer is because if it is arson and the state officials, officials who are more interested in marijuana and other insanities will be caught once again having failed the people. So they'll tell you it's spontaneous combustion. If there is anyone listening to this show in the firefighting world who's out there right now, who has evidence that there may be arson, I want you to call the, sh the show right now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go to KSFO, Todd Line 2, go ahead please. Are you a firefighter, Todd? Uh, yes, sir, I am. I'm also a fire chief and uh, with a lot of experience in what's called the wildland urban interface, which is what is happening in uh, the Sonoma and Napa Valleys. So tell us what you think is behind all of this, these massive fires. Did they all start about the same 10 o'clock period? So it's my understanding that that's the case. And let me preface that uh, the, um, where I'm basing my, my information on came from a Department of Wildland, or I'm sorry, Department of Homeland Security conference I attended five years ago, where Wally Chubot and several others, where he was the keynote speaker, and uh, several others had talked about a longstanding strategy of Al Qaeda and now today continuing into ISIS, is to start these fires because of the economic impact that it has into a community. Uh, fires like this cost tens of millions of dollars, but it's also the loss of agricultural impact. Every economy is based on new wealth gener generated from three primary ingredients, mining, agriculture, and manufacturing. Everything we have comes mm -hmm. out of the ground or off the hoof. If you dis place that supply chain it has a catastrophic uh, economic what kind of vermin are let into this country would do a thing like this to our country what kind of human filth are we letting into this nation without any screening listening to these psychotic liberals telling us that all people are equal they're all fine they're all wonderful how can we be letting these human throwbacks into our nation like this look i have a lot of emotions about this the politicians are killing us all it's that simple. And they're not going to tell you it's arson. I'll tell you right now. You're not going to hear it's arson. If it's from today till kingdom come, they'll never tell you it's arson. Because if they ever admitted that it was arson number one, and a member of Al-Qaeda or ISIS number two, they would admit what? That they're a bunch of do-nothing morons who permitted this to happen. They're not going to admit that. That would go against the whole multicultural open borders theory, wouldn't it? So they're going to tell you it's just spontaneous combustion as a result of what? Fill in the blanks, Matt Damon. Global warming caused it. Expect that tonight from the San Francisco Chronicle. Global warming caused the fires to all erupt at 10 o'clock last night in eight counties. All at once in eight counties, puff, the global warming genie came down and started eight fires in eight counties. It wasn't ISIS. It wasn't Al-Qaeda. It wasn't a plain old American arsonist. It was global warming. Just ask Larry David or Dianne Feinstein. They're experts in science. My friends were talking about huge stories here. The insanity of the left is the connecting story of all of them. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Ladies 
Ladies and gentlemen, California is burning. Do you understand what's going on? It's not a single fire. Do you have any idea that most of these fires are not contained? Do you understand 1,500 houses and commercial buildings have been destroyed? Now, there are many fires. Tubbs Fire, Napa County, 25,000 acres. Think of that. Zero percent contained. Atlas Fire, Napa County, wine country, 25,000 acres, zero percent contained. Mendocino County, 10,000 acres, 10,000 acres, zero percent contained. One killed, two very seriously injured. If you look at a statewide map of the fires, you'll be very surprised to see it's not a single fire. There's a fire in Butte County, Cherokee Fire, 7,500 acres, 20% contained. There's a Cascade Fire, Yuba County, 5,000 acres, 0% contained. Nuns Fire, Sonoma County, 5,000. You know what 5,000 acres is? Laporte Fire, Butte County, 3,000 acres, 0% contained. Patrick Fire, Napa County, 3,000 acres, 0% contained. Sulphur Fire, Lake County, 2,000 acres, 0% contained. What is odd, there's more. There's more to it than this, and I can keep reading them to you. Napa, Sonoma counties are being devastated in many areas by these fires. The question is, first, how did these fires start? I am getting reports that many of these fires started about the same time last night, 10 o'clock. And now, of course, we're being told they're spontaneous, they jumped the hill, they uh, transferred on their own. Do you actually believe that? Do you actually believe this? How do we know what started these fires? Santa Rosa is a city of 175,000 people. Many, many people were evacuated out of this city, including people in an old age home. Two hospitals uh, were evacuated. But what about the animals? I asked that two hours ago. I haven't gotten an answer. Safari West animals, uh, are, there's a place called Safari West in the wine country. What have they done with the giraffes in Safari West? Is there anyone listening to this program who is associated with the animal park near the wine country called Safari West? You have beautiful animals out there, giraffes, rhinoceroses, cheetahs, and other African animals uh, at the Safari West Wildlife Preserve in Santa Rosa. Where are they? Have they been saved? Now what about the thousands of farm animals? You say you can laugh at it if you want, but you got thousands of cows, you got geese, you got ducks, you got sheep, you got goats, you got horses. Where are they going? What are they doing with all of them? I don't have the answer to these questions, ladies and gentlemen, but all I know is that the firefighters are doing everything they can to stop the fires. The CHP has their helicopters out there rescuing people trapped by flames. I don't see any members of the ACLU out there saving anybody nor do I see any members of Black Lives Matter or ACT UP or Occupy This or Occupy That. Somehow they're not up there helping anybody. All they're doing is plotting how to destroy America. I am so sick and tired of the two Americas not coming to understand that we have a fight for our survival on our hands. You have those who are building and those who are destroying. Those who are creating and those who are destroying. You have those who are making and those who are taking, and I am sick of it. I'm sick of listening to this garbage about how evil my country is. And I'm sick and tired of the fat people in the news business, these putzes from the local television shows, these useless idiots who say nothing about anything unless it's the usual perpetrator in their mind, someone who looks like Timothy McVeigh. I want to know what you think if you have any information. you got farmers and livestock up there. Where are they going? Are there any farmers listening to this show in a car? Uh, what about the farm and dairy land? What about all those animals up there? What are you doing with them? How are you saving the animals? Where are they going? These are questions that need answers. We're also talking about the vermin who want to destroy Columbus Day. They have no idea what the hell they're talking about. The uh, noble savage never existed. There were no noble savages that we know of. They were eating each other alive, skinning each other alive. As far as the sacred Central Americans called the Aztecs, they didn't just capture the enemy to kill him. They captured him to torture them to death in their satanic rituals. So don't tell me that Columbus found a peaceful, beautiful place that was living in harmony. It's garbage. Okay, I've said what I have to say. What do you want to say? The phone number is 855-407-282. You know my name. You know the place. You know the station. Now let's go to michaelsavage.com. 
Yesterday was heaven, today is hell. There I was, Columbus Day in North Beach, outside Pinocchio Restaurant. Look at the beautiful children, the Italian kids, hanging around with old Savage. Somehow we all got along. And by the way, in the parades, it was multi-ethnic. Black kids, white kids, a lot of Asian kids. You name it, they were in the parades. They weren't hating each other. They weren't beating each other up. That's the, you know, All I kept saying to my friends there during the parades were, how come we don't see the faces of these children and this multi-ethnic view of the Columbus Day Parade from the vermin at the San Francisco Chronicle? How come the garbage that run these newspapers, these filthy haters of America, these perverts and these deviants, how come they never show the true face of Columbus Day? Why is it that the filth who run this once great newspaper never show you the harmony of the races at a Columbus Day Parade, I asked. Where are the pictures showing the multi-ethnic nature of this Columbus Day Parade? Why is it that the city has not at one single newspaper? It's all run by vermin on the left who try to dis cause hatred between people. But it was just nothing but beauty yesterday that I saw. Look at me with the children. Do you see any anger there? There was no anger, not one angry moment in that day. There was not one fight. There was not one incident that I saw that was bad during that Columbus Day parade. Now compare it to some of the other ethnic parades in this country. Go ahead, make my day and tell me I'm wrong. Go ahead, make my day. I didn't see one incident that was off yesterday in the whole parade, but compare it to some of the other wonderful ethnic parades. You indigenous people, you. Tell me about your parades, what happens when you have a parade. How many people come out alive is the question, not how many people come out are dead. I am sick of this double talk. It's like I'm living in a brainwashing asylum. The newspapers here don't exist, they're all liars. Every one of them who writes for them is sick. There's a guy uh, at the Chronicle who covered the Blue Angels on Saturday. I wanted to find him and wring his neck. I won't mention his name. He said hordes of people came to watch the Blue Angels. He sneered at the pilots. He sneered at the planes. He sneered at the ships. He sneered at everybody who was a 1,000% better than him. He's not good enough to wash their laundry. He's not good enough to shine their shoes. And I think his name is Scott Rubenstein. I wanted to call him up and say, you moron, you. If it wasn't for the U.S. military, you'd be a lampshade, you fool. If it wasn't for the U.S. military, you wouldn't be in this country, you idiot, you. Why are you putting out this poison against the military? But I didn't say it. I'm saying it now. And if you don't like it, you know what you can do? You can call the show at 855-407-282 and tell me what you think of me. And maybe we'll take your call. Maybe we won't. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? What do you know? What do you know about anything? Let me take some calls here and see what you know about this. KSFO, line two. Frank, go ahead. Fire away. All right, go ahead. Say something. That Jerry Brown turned down the largest... Uh, aircraft that puts out fires, and uh, Russia has it right now, and they said they loaned it to us, but uh, that criminal Jerry Brown is not going to uh, uh, allow do, do you have evidence to prove that Jerry Brown said no to the Russian um, firefighting uh, airplane? It's all on record, sir. It's all on record. And, and, and it's, for the last, call, last few years, they've been asking to use it, and he says no. And it's the largest aircraft, bigger than the C-130, and he says no. Uh, so, uh, well, you know, Jerry Brown has Jerry Brown has other problems other than the fires that are burning. He's got to push the left wing agenda as fast as he can. He's got to make sure all the illegals are nice and safe tonight in bed. He's got to make sure all the illegals are fed and housed and clothed. That's Jerry's job. Otherwise, he wouldn't last a day in office. The only reason he's there is because of the illegal aliens. Everybody knows that. The unions were behind them, and the unions are who? S E I U, illegal alien. That's what it is. That's who put this bum in office. That's who keeps Feinstein in office. It's the illegal alien community that put these anti-Americans in office. It's that simple. I'm furious at these lousy politicians. They're all no good. They're all no good. There's not a good one amongst them in the state. They're all, they're all, they're all de demonic. Did you hear what Jerry Brown did over the weekend? I caught this story. California lowered the penalty for knowingly exposing partners to HIV. Let me repeat this. Let me repeat it because it makes no sense unless you're insane. Listen to me. It's a CNN report. Are you listening? Starting January 1st, 2018, it will no longer be a major crime in California to knowingly, knowingly now, that's the word, expose a sexual partner to HIV without disclosing the infection. Psycho Brown signed legislation on Friday that lowered this offense from a felony to a misdemeanor. It gets even worse. Are you ready? The new law passed by the psychos in Sacramento 
also reduces the penalty for knowingly donating HIV-infected blood from a felony to a misdemeanor. Now, you know what that means? It means that someone with AIDS who's sick, mentally ill, can now go in and knowingly give HIV-infected blood. And if you get AIDS, guess what? It doesn't matter to Jerry Brown. What matters is that he satisfied one psychotic group of lobbyists in this state. It gets crazier by the second. California lowers penalty for knowingly exposing partners to HIV. And who pushed this? Are you ready for the names of the psychos who sponsored this? S Senator Scott Weiner and Assemblyman Todd Gloria, both Democrats, argued that California law was outdated and stigmatized people living with HIV. That makes no medical sense whatsoever. That's insanity. It has nothing to do with stigmatizing people. It has to do with protecting people, not stigmatizing people. Wiener, the psycho, said the most effective way to reduce HIV infections is to destigmatize HIV. Is he crazy? Is he out of his mind? Gloria released a statement on Friday saying, quote, the bill will put the state at the forefront in the fight to stop the spread of HIV. This, my friends, is the classic example of psychotics running the state. It does not destigmatize HIV. What it does is guarantee HIV will now be spread. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a meltdown not only of the state but of common sense. All of our safety is at risk because of the left-wing fanatics who have hijacked not only the state government, but this one-party corrupt system has hijacked the newspapers, the television stations, and virtually every radio station in the state of California with very rare exception. I rest my case. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Europe, the plague of Islamism continues to rage. There's a machete attack around the run in London. Isn't it nice? Isn't multiculturalism, multiculturalism grand? A knifeman, not describing who the knifeman is, broke an elderly woman's leg and threatens tourists in Nice. Isn't multiculturalism great? Isn't open borders just a wonderful, wonderful idea? It sure is particularly if you're on medication and you're running the state or running a nation. Absolutely great. Meanwhile, California has the worst fires in state's history. The only good news is, is that cannabis harvests have been threatened. That's the only good news so far. Governor Brown says it's not under control. Uh, the wind whip wildfires are sweeping, sweeping, sweeping. What would you do if you had to evacuate? Well, I don't know if I want to go into that one right now. Let's play some sound that I have. Here is uh, Harvey Feinstein, I mean, Diane Weinstein. I mean, I don't know which Weinstein or Feinstein it is, saying that at age 84, she's going to run again because of global warming and guns, that we need her so badly for these things. Here she is in clip 02, Feinstein, America attacking gun owners in 02. America is a gun-happy country, and... I think there are many of us in growing numbers that don't want a gun-happy country. Guns have their place. I don't have a problem if they're used properly. You have a bodyguard with I a gun, you lying over the thing, you! ...is a growth of substantial improper use of weapons, beginning with the Texas Bell Tower. I have seen over the decades a growth in the substantial misuse of the Senate by people who feather their own nest, Diane. How come there's been no investigation of senators who may be steering contracts to their spouses? Could it be because there's no newspapers left in America? Could it be that the only targets are those who do not control the newspapers, Diane? And so you have Feinstein blaming guns now for the massacre rather than the man who did it. I don't even want to talk about guns. She's up to her old tricks. Meanwhile, at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas, a so-called professor, you know today what the word professor means, don't you? Ha, huh, professor. 
She blamed the Las Vegas massacre on Trump. Her name, Tess Winkleman. Thank God it's not Winkelstein. Here's Tess Winkleman, Winkleman blaming the Las Vegas massacre on Trump, if you can believe this. Tomorrow we'll wake up and hear that the wildfires were caused by Donald Trump. Let's hear this one now. When he got elected, I told my classes three semesters ago, some of us won't be affected by his presidency, but others are going to die. Other people will die because of this. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other sound I have saved for you. Now, here's an interesting one from Steve Wynn of the Great Wynn Resort in Las Vegas, who said this this uh, slaughter in Vegas would not have happened in his hotel because, oh, listen to Clip 10. He tells you what they do in his hotel. Listen carefully. We have been guarding the doors for two years, every single day, 24 hours a day. We have magnetometers at any place, at every employee entrance, and at every place of human collection, like the nightclubs. We don't wand people at the door. That's not necessary. We profile or inspect or examine everybody that enters the building. He also said, this is very interesting, that the maids are told that if anyone stays in a room, I think it's a certain number of, uh, oh, beyond a certain number of hours, they report that room occupant to to the authorities they go into the room and apparently at the hotel where this lunatic was he had been there for days at a time and no one had gone in there so uh apparently there was a breakdown at every every turn at every turn in that hotel steve Wynn also said that the killer had the most vanilla profile one could possibly imagine that there was nothing interesting in this mundane man however had he been holed up in one of the Wynn resorts for the number of hours he had been in there, they would have gone in that room and stopped him. So apparently the hotel failed completely to protect the people according to this story. That's the Savage Report for the day. Thanks for listening. Savage.